Hello, and welcome to Greet the Week. I'm Mona Duncan, and today we're going to be talking about, well, the school has started all around for here and there. And for years, uh, I'm bringing up here the, we're going to be looking today at uh, effective study skills without having test anxiety. Uh, there are three colleges here in the Waco area, and then uh, within surrounding areas, there are probably 10. And over for the past several years, uh, I have worked with them uh, and with their students going in and teaching them study skills and various things. And so I thought I'd kind of share that today since this has been a busy weekend and I haven't done a lot of pre-planning on what to speak about today. So Socrates says, education is the kindling of a fire, not the filling of a vessel. We want something that is, you know, that, that, that keeps burning, that keeps growing, that keeps enticing. And so um, this right here, this little caricature that I kind of fixed up here, is supposed to be anxiety. And so what does anxiety look like to you? You know, do you get frustrated with uh, the things that you don't understand, whether it is schoolwork or whatever it may be. I know, uh, well, there's a several things that we are working at with an attorney about how to settle distributions of, you know, where things will go with property and stuff and so forth. And it's a little difficult. And sometimes that anxiety, you know, it can seem like that there's this Mack truck that's barreling down on you or that it is just so hard or so difficult that you can't find out what's going on and you're tired of jumping through hoops and you're confused and all that kind of stuff. So this is a cartoon that I clipped several years ago. I thought it was so powerful. There's two of them. Here's one, don't be a zitz. And then eventually we're going to look at, yes, please do be a zitz. But anyway, uh, the uh, mother asked her son, did you have a, pro don't you have a project that's due tomorrow? And he says, yeah, I'm getting ready to start on it. Start? When was it assigned? Oh, about a month ago. And so he says, but all that it involves is some research, six pages of a comparative analysis and a poster. And so mom is climbing the wall. And dad says, the boy, the boy driving you up the wall again? And he says, the, the son says, by the way, do we have any poster boards? So he's got to do that. He hasn't even gotten his equipment together to do that. And so sometimes that's the way that every student can succeed. Uh, here's a quote from Dr. Glasser. He said, whenever a, when a student begins to depend on memory rather than on thinking, it provides him with a very thin potential for identity for discovering the world and his place in it. And so always, always we choose, need to choose our attitude because there is a direct correlation between having a bad attitude or a poor attitude or a negative attitude and the low achievement that goes hand in hand with that. Also see that learning and life is a challenge to be met and to overcome that it is a challenge and it may be kind of a difficult one, but uh, I have a note here on my computer that I have to myself, I challenge yourself. I want to challenge myself in everything that I'm doing to make an impact. And then watch yourself talk, uh, make it always positive, you know, say things like, I mean, I enjoy learning, even though this is kind of difficult, even though acknowledge the fact that it may be hard, but I love learning it. I will understand this. And I always feel good about increasing my knowledge. So put that positivity in there. And Zig Ziglar says that it is the attitude that determines our altitude and our altitude, whether that is in the grades we receive or how high we fly a kite or in a vehicle, in a plane. So we always want to invest in ourselves. The healthier our self-esteem, the easier it is to learn. And the poor learning is a poor is usually kind of attached to a poor self-image and a lack of ability. So uh, the way you see yourself 
to a large degree determines how you behave and our behavior. So you are special, but you're not that special, as in more special than everyone else. You are unique. You're just not that unique. You are important. You're just not that important. Meaning that we're not better than anyone else. I mean, it's just looking at that equal line that we are not better than or worse than anyone else. That it is a part of. And so my personal beliefs is that each person is wonderful, special, unique, and important. And that the more we good we can see in about ourselves and even in about others, uh, the more we can overcome that difficulty. So a good offense is a good defense. I'm sure you're watching all the football games these days. So prepare an enticing study location, someplace where it's quiet, someplace where it's well lit, where you can have a proper equipment. Remember back with our Zitz cartoon, he didn't even have his poster boards to complete his thing that he needed for tomorrow's school. So anyway, so get your equipment and make something that's comfortable. And then set a specific time, whether it's early in the morning, later in the evening, at a specific time that you set yourself for. And then ask questions. Ask questions to yourself about the text. Ask questions to your professor. Ask questions of yourself. Ask questions of your classmates. And then know how to re recover a fumble. You know, if you drop the ball, pick it up, and go on with the game. Go for excellence above perfection. Just doing the very best you can do, always with the inclination of wanting to improve. So, teach yourself. Survey the land. Open up your books and see what needs how many pages is it that needs to be covered before the next lesson. Look at all the pages and study the chapters to get an overview. And then taking it down and doing it, any chapter title, anything that's in bold letters, be sure that you read about it. Because that's pretty important. That's why it's in bold letters. Look at the pictures or the charts and read the information about them. I know I have found that many times in uh, learning, there will be a picture that has something underneath it that will contradict what is actually in the script as to what is going on in the, in the subject matter. And so observe the word definitions. They will have some definitions on there. The more you can understand and know what those definitions are, the easier you can figure out what's going on in the text itself. And then also learn root words, prefixes, and suffixes so that you can look at if it's past, present, or future. And then be an investigative reporter. You're going to read, but have your pad behind, beside you where you can write down some thoughts. Who is, who is this uh, project about? What is it about? When is it due? When did it take place? When... Where, you know, what country, what uh, date, what, what, why, why is it important for us today? And then how, how can I align with it? How can I understand what is coming from, whether it's history or psychology or math or whatever it is, put down, ask yourself these questions and put down some kind of an answer and how you will find the answer to it. Here is a copy of you know, use your own computer, your own thing to make, uh, this was studying uh, psychology and all the different people and the year they were born and what country they came from and the schools that they either founded or were a part of and the key points, what was the most important and what did they accomplish and their other things, things that you're interested in. And then here is a picture, this picture of the brain is, you know, uh, drawn by someone else. But I went back and as I was learning and studying, I began to put in pictures of it so that I could see it in my mind. That if I was thinking about that, I would know more how to uh, handle it. And then 
Whereas what you are learning, you want to tie it to you emotionally, not just mentally, but emotionally. Maybe exaggerate it. This is so, this is, this is what, you know, uh, or miniature drive it, make it really small so that you are taking this big, enormous problem and putting it down into a little bitty thing that's going to make it easier to see and to handle. Color it, deform it, smell it, act it out, tell a tall tale about it. You get real creative in your studying so that it can become fun, so that it can become enlightening. And then uh, it takes as much energy to scribble mindlessly as it does to paint a masterpiece, according to Alan Gibbons. And I am sure you can agree with that also. So we need to trust yourself. No man can reveal to you but that which already lies half asleep in the dawning of your knowledge. You've gotten a few words there, and now as you hold on to it, and exaggerate it so that you can begin to see how it is impactful or even just to have a deeper question for it uh, that can help you to impact that deepening of your knowledge. And so back to wit, zits. So do be a zits. And he comes in and he says, you know what is weird? I started this huge biology project the minute it was assigned, worked on it a little bit every day and finished three days before it was due. It's almost as if all those lectures you've given me about good study habits were true. And so, you know, there's the mom and dad are comforting each other that uh, going back to the first zits that we looked at. Well, think you can do it? Well, I think you can. So thanks for being here and many blessings.